Now, when I personally speak about generating income through interest and dividends, I'm talking about two very different things. You see, interest is what you earn on your money by lending it. For example, to a company uh, when you're buying a bond or to a bank when you buy a CD. In these examples, the income that you receive in the form of interest is actually guaranteed through a contract that you have with the borrower. The agreement usually says that as long as you keep your loan in place for a certain period of time, you'll receive regular fixed interest rate payments at a certain percentage of the total, and again, those payments are guaranteed by the borrower. Dividends, on the other hand, from common stocks or stock mutual funds represent a discretionary payment, which can change over time. Typically, they're a share of the profits as you're, in essence, part owner of the company when you buy their stock. They're based upon the company's earnings provided that it's making money. With dividends from these types of instruments, there is no contract and no guarantee. That makes having a sound strategy for using dividends, as well as the right balance between interest and dividends, crucial in an income-based portfolio. These strategies depend upon your situation and any number of factors. So let's talk about one easy example that has to do with the differences between common stocks and stock mutual funds, for example, versus preferred stocks. It's a distinction that many investors don't really understand. It's also one that a lot of advisors won't explain if it happens to run counter to their mutual fund-based or common stock-based investment model. You see, technically preferreds represent a different class of stock. Uh, however, I actually like to think of preferreds as being much more bond-like than stock-like for many reasons. For example, they do pay a stated consistent dividend rate, much like bonds. In addition, they tend to fluctuate in value more with the corporate bond market than they do with the overall stock market. The dividend rate on preferreds is also typically higher than the interest rate in a comparable corporate bond, even though preferreds, like bonds, have a par value or a face value. That extra interest payment or dividend payment is actually to compensate investors for the additional risk. That dividend rate in many cases is guaranteed by the issuer and the price of preferreds tends to stay sticky around the par value. A company will drop dividend rates on common stock but typically not on preferreds except as a last resort. Now in a case where a company defaults on debt, which truly would be the last resort, uh, bondholders would have an opportunity for partial repayment ahead of preferred stockholders. So bonds still, in that respect, have less risk than preferreds. So does it mean that preferreds are right for everyone nearing retirement with an income-based portfolio? Does it mean they're a necessary strategy for generating dividends for every investor over the age of 50? Well, of course not. They simply offer one example of a strategic approach an advisor who specializes in income might recommend, depending on their client's individual situation and goals. That's why identifying your retirement goals is so incredibly essential. Ideally, the specific strategies that an advisor ends up recommending will be designed to serve your specific goals.